Okay, so now I am going to share uh, my testimony regarding my um, success in the courts of heaven and also how um, God has uh, provided for me. So in 2016, I was actually um, living in um, a city in Florida and I actually grew up there. Um, I was down there from, you know, the north and I was doing rotations at a very specific um, city. I just don't want to say just to kind of protect my identity. And um, and that was where um, the hospital wanted me to um, like do my residency there. I was doing an audition rotation and they were just kind of like, Ramya, we love you. We just need you to graduate on time. And that was the thing that I was not able to do. I was not able to graduate on time. I actually ended up uh, dropping out of medical school and um, my life path just changed. But deep down inside me in 2016, I knew God was telling me that I will be living in Florida one day. And it wouldn't just be a temporary thing where I'm there for a couple months, but I will be there for a long time. So I headed back up north and I am now living with my parents and I am trying to figure my life out. I'm actually healing from um, some trauma that I incurred um, in my adulthood. And um, I was just kind of focused on that. I was um, going to church and I was praying and I was in the word every single day. And I was also linked up to a lot of different online ministries. And, um, and I just knew that well, I wanted to go back to medical school. That is what I tried to do. And again, it did not work work uh, out for me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to look for a job. Like, I can't do this anymore. I can't live with my parents anymore. I have to get a job and I need to move out. And so I started looking for a job. But I knew that there was some spirit that was hindering me. And um, it was preventing me from moving into the state of Florida. I, every time um, I would kind of put my feelers out in the spirit, I would just feel that the gates to Florida were closed and something was blocking it. So um, there was a teaching um, uh, released by this ministry that I was connected to at the time. I was uh, her moderator and she went on teaching about the courts of heaven. Now I did buy the books from Robert Henderson and I did read through them, but I felt like the teaching kind of made it more real for me. So I went into um, prayer and fasting and um, before I would even go to the courts of heaven, I needed to identify the spirit that is uh, preventing me from um, accessing uh, the state of Florida. So I, um, I did a fast and I was like, God, I need you to show it to me. I need you to tell me the name of that spirit that is keeping me from moving into the promised land. Now, as I was thinking this, I was, um, going on my daily trip to, I think, Dunkin' Donuts to go get a coffee. Um, in the morning, a white uh, van with Florida license tags pulls out in front of me. And at this time, I am in the state of Ohio. Um, I didn't really see uh, cars with uh, Florida plates very often. So this white like work van, it pulls out in front of me and um, there's a sticker on it and it says Moab. So I immediately know God is telling me, okay, this is the spirit that you need to deal with. And the spirit of Moab is, you know, it's always like you are near the promised land, but you can't access it. So I immediately knew it was that spirit. So um, that very afternoon, like two hours after I saw that thing, I um, went into prayer and I went into the courts of heaven and I asked um, for that spirit to be removed out of my life. And then two hours after that, <clears throat> I get an email from this lady who lives in Florida, is connected to this ministry that I am just kind of assisting and helping with online moderating. And she said, I understand that you want to move to Florida and I want to offer up to you mine and my husband's home. And it turns out to be in the exact same area where I was doing um, rotations as a medical student in my third year. Um, and I was so shocked. And I didn't pursue that opportunity because um, when I prayed about it, I felt like that wasn't how um, he wanted me to proceed forward. But I knew the gates were open. I knew the doors to Florida were absolutely open. And then a few months later, um, actually, no, almost a year later after that, I was actually moving down to Florida. 
I knew that uh, I just knew that the doors had opened. I just didn't know um, that it like how I would move there. And I also knew that if I saw that opportunity and if I didn't think about it and just pursued it, I could get myself into a big mess. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that when I moved to Florida, it wasn't just to um, have like, you know, a, a, a random job just to get some um, bills paid and that, you know, that I would be living in somebody's house. That's not what I envisioned for myself. I envisioned myself uh, moving to Florida in a glorious way, in a job and, uh, and with a job and um, a, like provision that would give me enough money to be able to pay rent in a city in Florida. So fast forward <clears throat> like a year or so down the road. Yeah, so I got that email um, August uh, 2018 and then I moved down to Florida fall of 2019. Um, there were still some steps of obedience that I needed to take. One of them was to um, start creating a Florida suitcase. Um, so I bought a Tommy Bahama suitcase and I started filling it with bathing suits, beach towels, um, sunscreen, and um, cut off shorts that I could like wear at the beach and cover up some things like that. And I looked totally crazy uh, purchasing these things in the middle of Ohio winter. And at that time, I also had no privacy. I was living with my parents. Like she, they already think that I'm nuts because um, you know, I'm Christian and I was born Hindu with it, like they're practicing Hindus and they're just like, we don't know what's wrong with our daughter. Well, she's maybe like just, maybe she needs help. I, we don't know. Like they didn't get it at all. So I actually had to um, send the items that I was purchasing to a friend's house and I would go pick, pick them up from her and then I would pack them into this little suitcase. And I did that in faith and I completed the suitcase project, I believe, um, September of 2018 and I was crushed by September 2019 because I still had not moved down to Florida. I actually stopped working out because um, <laughs> I was like, well, I'm not going to be wearing a bathing suit, so who cares? I'll just gain the 10 pounds. And um, I had kind of given up on some aspects, but um, during my walk with the Lord in my job hunt, um, within a few months of starting to apply, I started to get interviews. And there were so many times where God told me not to take an interview. Um, and there were really weird acts of obedience that I had to do. Like, for example, I mean, I was being berated to death by my mom every single day, like about how many jobs I applied for, how many interviews I, I was getting. Like, they were frustrated with me um, being in their home. So there was one evening I was supposed to go to a career fair and um on my way there like i felt in my spirit do not go to that career fair i want you to go to this restaurant and i want you to go get dinner there and so i went to this restaurant and i'm already like you know i'm eating by myself and my waitress ends up being this you know sweet christian girl and she had been lost for a couple years and her boyfriend's in jail and she just needed help and i was like do you want to go to church with me next weekend and, and she showed up, she came to church uh, with me and she kind of directed her uh, ways back to the Lord. So there were so many little things that I had to do um, during that whole year. And then come May of 2019, I am just so desperate and I am again, living in my hometown and I'm humiliated because I was in medical school. You know, I had finished three fourths of my education, my um, uh, medical program and here I am without any degree. And then on top of that, I hadn't worked since uh, 2011 because you're not allowed to uh, work while you're in medical school. And all this time had passed and I was dealing with trauma and I was dealing with heartache and pain and um, health stuff and all this crazy stuff, you know? Again, super humiliated. And I am just like, you know what, God? Like, I am willing to take just any job. Like, I am humble. Like, I will go wait tables. I don't care. Like, I need a job and I need to get out of here because my parents don't respect me. And um, this is just humiliating. And I walked into Ulta and the clinic ladies like, you know, why don't you just work here? Like, you know, you can work like 20 hours a week while you look for another job like um and I think you'll just enjoy it and I was like yeah absolutely like I love it here and I was always really friendly with the Ulta ladies I mean I had been shopping at that Ulta for I don't know like 15 years or something crazy like that so um I applied and um they loved me I had a great time in the interviews and go figure I failed the Estee Lauder customer service exam the Lord closed that door 
um, for me. So, <clears throat> and then about a week or so after that, he said to me, I want you to stop applying for jobs. And I was like, excuse me, I'm supposed to have a job. Like, I, I he's like, I want you to stop applying for jobs. And I'm like, okay then, okay. So I stopped applying for jobs and I twiddled my thumbs for a couple months. I'm panicking. And, um, and this, um, opportunity came up to go to this career fair in um, Atlanta. And at this career fair, the who's who of all the big companies that are going to be there, the pharmaceutical companies, the med device companies, um, you know, the eye care companies, they're all going to be there because it's a sales um, conference. So I was practicing my elevator pitch like every single day and um, I had a great story and I was ready to go and sell that. So when I get down to the conference in Atlanta, I stayed with my aunt and uncle and um, it was a course of, I think three days. And um, I am in the car by like 5.30 a.m. and I get to the hotel by like 6 a.m. so I could um, just hang out in the lobby and continue to practice because I was so deadly scared of like Atlanta traffic. When I walk in, I see all these people wearing scrubs and it's um, this very distinct color and it just kind of like reminded me of med school and I felt comforted. And so I kind of approached them, but they swooped in on me. And this turns out to be the largest med device company in the world. I had so much favor. I had interviews on the spot. I was also invited to attend their evening, like happy hour type thing. I, I didn't drink at all. I didn't even drink water that night. Um, and I was like exhausted, like, you know, selling my pitch every, every time I would talk to a person from that company. So I walked away with multiple, um, potential leads, uh, for a job. And I ended up like not even, um, being able to get to the other boots and they were the most prominent company there. Um, and you know, in retrospect, I kind of wish that I had went with a different opportunity, but that's okay. This is what God intended for me. And, um, like I get back to my parents' house and I have so many interviews, um, with them, there were positions in Omaha, Nebraska, and then there was a position in Florida and there was a position, um, that, uh, <clears throat> that came through me through another hiring manager that was present at the conference. Um, it was really weird and it was really interesting. After getting back within a couple weeks, I am now frustrated because, you know, I am only able to pursue opportunities from this company because I didn't even have time to get to all the other boots um, at the conference. But I did pick up, um, you know, I, I made some networking contacts and, um, and they actually came through with me years down the road with other um, interview opportunities in like 2020. So within a couple of weeks of being home, I suddenly get this email on a Friday. And in this email, it's a hiring manager and he is based out of uh, Johnson City, Tennessee. And he says to me, hey, I understand you were interviewed by this other hiring manager. He's my sales counterpart where I'm the service counterpart. I have a position here in um, the Tri-Cities area of Tennessee and we think you would just be a great fit. Would you be willing to come in for a Sunday interview? He said, I understand it's Friday and I understand this is last minute, but I am willing to pay for your hotel cost. Realistically, he should have paid for my um, driving cost as well, um, but he didn't. <laughs> so um, immediately my reaction was not joy, but it was tears and upset because there I was, I wanted this role as a clinical specialist in Florida. And it wasn't just in anywhere in Florida, it was that particular city that I was actually supposed to do my residency in. And my heart ached to be there. Like in 2016, I could feel it in my spirit, like I'm supposed to live there, but it wasn't happening. And I am just so crushed and I'm like flipping out. And I am also upset because this area that he wants me to work in 
is an extremely rural and impoverished area. And I did my third, most of my third year rotations in medical school in an extremely rural, uh, impoverished area. And it's just an environment that I don't do well in. I, I do believe that you know, if I was married and I had kids and a family with me and, um, you know, I had my support system there, I believe that I can enjoy living in a rural area. But as a single girl and living alone, <laughs> it's just not fun for you. Like, it, it's so hard to meet people, um, you know, especially when it's cold and dark and winter's there. It's just extremely depressing. So here I am having this breakthrough and I am not even able to enjoy it. Super, super upsetting. And then on top of everything else, I basically have to travel to Johnson City, Tennessee um, in a very strange way. So all of the hotel rooms in Johnson City, Tennessee were completely booked, okay? I'm going in for a Sunday interview and I can't physically stay in Johnson City on Saturday night because there is a NASCAR race and all the hotel rooms are booked. So what I ended up having to do was I actually ended up having to travel all the way through Johnson City, Tennessee, and the next Marriott Hotel available is in Boone, North Carolina. Because you know these um, companies, when they uh, pay for your hotel, they only have it with certain vendors. And so this guy only had Marriott. So I actually had to drive all the way through it, through um, Boone, North Carolina. The interesting about Boone, North Carolina, the last time I passed through Boone, North Carolina, is um, when I was moving down to Florida in 2016. I actually went and stayed with a girlfriend in Boone because I wanted to see the mountains of North Carolina. So it's interesting that I'm making this Boone touch point. But at the same time, I'm upset. Like I am distraught. It doesn't make sense where all these emotions are coming from. Like why can't I just enjoy um, this breakthrough? Well, I get to Boone, North Carolina and I notice that my car is technically parked in Pisgah National Forest. What do we know about the spirit of Pisgah? The Mount, Mount Pisgah in the Bible is also known as Mount Nebo. This is where Moses died where he got to see the promised land and he did not get to enjoy any of it. And another thing is when I was in Boone, I was so attacked by the witchcraft in the mountains. Like I was not behaving um, how I usually do. I'm actually trying to sabotage myself and ruin the promise that God has given me. And I realized it's a spirit of Pisgah. So I survived Boone some way, somehow. I mean, I barely did um, <clears throat> like just, a lot of my ungodly behaviors were starting to show up when I was in Boone. And um, the next morning I drive all the way back to Johnson City, Tennessee, and I go to that 4 p.m. Um, Sunday evening interview. Now I have my interview and I am also meeting other um, reps that I would be working with and I get grilled by them. And one of them takes a liking to me and um, he is willing to be a resource for me. And then I also have to kind of sell my story to these uh, three other reps alongside with the hiring manager. So I make a case for myself the next day, that Monday morning, by calling up all the apartment communities in that area and checking them out and creating the story and like trying to sell myself like, no, I can live here. I will live here and I will be happy. And they were like, you know, Ramya, people here just don't last. Women like you, you know, with these bubbly personalities and you come from, you know, a different place and you're not born here, you're not raised here, there's nothing keeping you here. Within one year, people leave this job. He said, the hiring manager said to me, he said, however, I do know that you want to go to Florida. Like, I knew, I know that came up in your conversation with the other hiring manager at the sales network conference. Um, I'm willing to recommend you for any role that you find in the company if it's a place that you actually want to live and stay there for a long time. And I was like, this exact same role is available in that city um, that I wanted to live in in Florida. And it was open and he recommended it to me within a couple days. Um, that hiring manager is buying my flight to Florida and booking my hotel room and getting me a rental car. 
And on top of that, they had a hundred page PDF document of people that had applied for that job that were also local. But because I came recommended, I was the only person that they interviewed that was from out of state. Really wild. And it was the craziest interview that I had ever done. Um, whenever you do an interview, it's always a good foreshadowing of the experience that you're gonna have with that company. And my interview did not have an itinerary. I essentially had to start my day by getting in the car at 4 a.m. and then driving um, 90 miles south and going to a, a case in the operating room and getting quizzed and grilled and not knowing where I was gonna go next. And um, it, there was a lot of driving, a lot of little interviews, um, it, but overall it was um, successful. I actually had an interview um, like right off the plane, um, which is so interesting because most of the time if they're bringing in somebody from out of state and they fly in at like 3 p.m., they're not going to have an interview at 5 p.m. They usually are given a day to kind of just like relax and um, and then the next day is going to be an intense day of interviewing. But uh, no, I had my interview with um, my first one off the flight was at like 5 p.m. And um, and then the very next day, I basically started the process at 4 a.m. and it went until like 5 p.m. And then uh, I had to go to the airport and get in my car and go. And within a couple days, they reach out to me and I pressure them for an offer. And I said, listen, I'm interviewing at other companies too. I wasn't. Um, and I'm getting ready to fly out here and check this role out. Um, I need an offer by the end of this week. And I got my offer by the end of the week and I got that job. And it moved me into the very city that God told me was gonna be my home two years prior, three years prior actually. So it's interesting, right? You think you miss an opportunity, you think you miss a place that God has for you, but he's gonna move you there anyway, even if um, you know you and your own flesh or whatever, or spiritual warfare delays you for a little bit. That's how Satan can really get to you, is he can't take away what God has for you, but he can try to delay you, he can try to discourage you, and he can try to upset you. And that's why it's important to stay the course. Um, God's provision is abundant and endless. And, um, you know, that role didn't last uh, that long, but the interesting timing of it all is I moved to Florida about five months um, before the, the, you know, the sickness in the world um, started. And it really preserved my mental health. And I do believe that if I would have been in a sim similar uh, role um, up north in one of the states that would have shut down, I don't know where my mental health would have been. So it really gave me a good quality of life to live in the state of Florida as all these crazy things are going on in the world. So the detail orientedness of the Lord is astounding. And so even as I sit here today, I know that he is redeeming all of the broken things, all of the lost things. He is recouping lost wages. He is resolving it all. He is redeeming it all. He is restituting it all. He is restoring it all. And if he needs to, he will replace anything. You know, he will upgrade you in ways that you can't even see. Um, I will share the story of how God brought me to the place where it all started, where I live, um, in another um, testimony. But also just remember the courts of heaven is powerful. This is my second testimony now. And I believe um, this was triggered by what I did in the courts of heaven in 2018 regarding a spirit of Moab. Um, I dealt with that spirit and it opened the gates to Florida, which is what allowed that job to come forth for me. So ask the Lord, like, what's, what spirit is stopping you? Um, ask him to give it to you by name. Identify it and go into the courts of heaven and deal with it. And it will be, it will be done. Um, so have a great day and God bless.